we have to replace the present system with what? Are we going to reinvent something? Or are we going to look at the treasures that have been given to us by past civilizations? And I have first-hand experience in speaking to some of the traditional chiefs on the limited time. And I know that there is a conflict between the traditional values that are upheld by some of the chiefs and those that are upheld by the present day political leaders. Because the political leaders realizing that the more that they can um, diffuse the, the integrity of the traditional um, way of governance is the more that they can appropriate personal wealth, right? So we have to, we have to get our scholars and, and our intellectuals and those who understand the makeup of society. Uh, those, those very important um, nation building tools, we have to get our, in, our, our, our international intellectual class, those who have shown themselves to have integrity, to begin fashioning, fashioning those, 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 that blueprint, you know, as to what we'll be replacing this present um, Western-oriented societies with that promotes human value, the sacredness of life. Those, those genuine virtues that we have to replace our present society with. And, and it, it is a tremendous fight, but we have no other choice. We have no other choice. Um, the technology is obviously replacing whatever virtues we had of our own sense of moralities. You know, the West is literally imposing itself on the minds of our children even though our children has not migrated, you know, the technology now is in their faces. So they are, they are possessing values and, and moralities that, that are so in conflict with the sacredness of life, with a new vision for a new society that we really have to identify those things and try and, and have something that is meaningful and that can be embraced by the younger generation, the, 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 the older generation, as we have identified, some of them will want to come towards the new vision for Africa. And those that are stumbling blocks, we'll have to find a way to, to, to replace them. Thank you so much for that. And now, I wanted to spend some time on, on your music, because that is very important. Uh, because now you touch an area that is very important, which is about culture, our value system. I'm not going to really spend time there because that would take away the time we are going to spend on music. But really, I'll be interviewing different people in Africa related to this, about our value system. And all across Africa, it is a fully value system. Yep. And it's gradually being replaced by strange idea. Yep. That is why I think artists, this time, their work is particularly important particularly important because we are looking at the reinterpretation of our history our culture our value so tell me what is the role of music in all this that we are talking about when we when we analyze it is that we are producing we are the ones who are producing but what we are producing is a a deliberate form of mindlessness. There is no, and I'm not being racist by saying that, but there is no other people who has internalized and have exported rhythm, music, movement, culture, as Africans, the world understands that. So they have taken our strength and caused us to produce base 
mindless culture that is very infectious. When you see the contributions of the black Americans, ooh, how, how could you not, you know, want to be part of it? But at the same time, what it is that they are projecting from our own power, our own culture. So our own culture is now being used to continue the, the violence, and I use violence in a very broad way, the emotional and the intellectual and the human relationships and the poverty, all that is violence. And when you look at black American culture, which is the dominant force in world music today, it is mindlessness. And it is very, very deliberate. These people who control the mass media in terms of cultural um, products and, and, and packaging and, and penetration of, of other societies. It is very, very deliberate. Because again, if you feed people with that kind of culture at the end of the day, what it is that you have? Men disrespecting beautiful women and sisters. You know, there is no sense of building of intergenerational wealth. There is no sense of reflection of what is this life that we are really living, purpose of this life, you know. So when you add those things together, we, in the pursuit of our strengths, that has been masqueraded and disguises as this kind of mindlessness culture, um, we are doing more disservice and perpetuating our own enslavement by embodying that kind of culture. Now, one of our greatest ambassadors of culture from the Caribbean was Bob Marley. Bob Marley has been able to merge consciousness, relevance, and sweetness. So he has transcended the Caribbean. He's an international figure. Now, many a times we speak about best practices and finding best practices and replicating best practices. So why then, my brother, if Bob Marley is, was the most successful of all the Caribbean artists in pushing forward this genre of a, a new society, of a new hope, why are we not encouraging and using that as our major plank in terms of bringing forward new artists on the world market today. So these things, when you sit and you study them, these are, we are allowing commerce to dictate our cultural realities. And commerce is about the bottom line profits. And if commerce and profits are from a capitalistic mindset, we as African people will always feel the pain of, our, of the folly that has been inflicted upon us through, again, our strength as culture. So we definitely need to sit and re, you know, re, re examine what is being done to us with culture. And it is it's a, it's, it's a I don't know if you ever try talking a drunk man, you know, but when you become drunk with the wine of Babylon, you know, you have to use a different kind of language. Sometimes you have to use the same language of wine to get people out of a state of drunkenness. So we know the artists here. My music, my music is deliberately centered around, even deliberately centered around the Bob Marley model, consciousness, relevance, and sweetness. So regardless of what we sing or what we do, you will never find us in any kind of slackness in demoralizing our women or not just spending money on, on bling and, and clothing and hairstyles and nails and all these kind of falsities that have nothing to do with our human beauty. You know, so we try to push that model. Uh, we understand that we have to work with our brethren and sisters as a family, but 
the light. Um, without compromising, we have to be the light to shine. Uh, if we be a voice in the wilderness, it is our intentions not to be a voice in the wilderness forever. We understand the enormity of, of the resources that are extended to productions and on an international basis. Um, but that is what we have to work with, you know, until we can do better. So the light, if we are following that trend of, you know, um, one of our great sisters said, uh, do your best until you can do better. Um, that is the journey that we are traveling on right now. We are doing our best in terms of shining the light um, until we can do better. 